Hey guys and welcome to the Cream Tea Pickups YouTube channel. We're here with Tim. Tim's going to tell us all about the origins of this new Cream Tea guitar line. Thanks for joining us, Tim. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So we've got the three guitars here. We've got yeah, bit the, of selection. the standard, we've got the custom, and we've got the beautiful Billy Gibbons. Right, so I mean, Tim, really, we should probably start with the story of these guitars, yep. shouldn't we? And your involvement, and also, you know, there's a certain member of ZZ Top that's been there is. massively involved in this project. Yep. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that so that people can understand what these guitars are all about, really? Sure. Okay. So... I've been involved with a pickup company for a little while called Cream Tea Pickups um, that is very much mentored by Billy Gibbons um, and the CEO and founder was a, a, is a Norwegian guy called Thomas Nilsson. Um, he, he moved over to the UK when I met him and he's been working in the UK for a couple of years making pickups. So a bit of involvement with that. And then at the same time, I, I own a retail shop called Sound Effects and I'd been trying to sell for a number of years a brand of guitars called Relish. And I, I love them, I love the company, love the owners, loved all the principles about it, and they're very, very innovative, but maybe cramming a few too many innovations into one guitar. But one of the things I particularly liked was the ability to swap pickups out. Uh, and I was talking to the CEO, um, Sylvan uh, of Relish, and saying, look, you know, th this, this really is good. If it was in maybe a more traditional style guitar, then, then perhaps it might catch on a little bit better because I'd struggled to make it work and yeah. you know, much as they've had a degree of success, probably you know, not as much as I thought they should have done from the idea. Because they're really interesting, very innovative, like you say, forward thinking guitars. Yeah. And they sound amazing and they've got all the vintage sounds that you might yeah. possibly need. Yeah. But if you turn up to a recording session, an engineer might go, yes, that's very nice, thank you very much. If you're snapping yeah. a new guitar, where's your Telecaster? Yeah, they're quite esoteric, so they've got different pickup switchings, they've got aluminium um, cores to them, bamboo fretboards, so there's lots of things thrown in there. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a lot for people. You know, the, the guitar buyer, you know, both here and abroad, is quite traditional, so, you know, evolving a guitar is much better than completely revolutionizing something. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I was having this conversation and, and, and trying to sort of, you know, just encourage him to have a different shaped guitar. And he said, well, his next step would be to license the pickup swapping technology and approach some guitar manufacturers. And as I say, I've, I've, it's become a friend of mine. And I said, well, look, I'll see if I can help. You know, I run a retail shop. Yeah. I know lots of guitar builders. I'll approach a few for you and see whether anybody's interested. So I spoke to a few and, you know, kind of half interest, a little bit of interest. And then I spoke to one in particular and they said, look, it, it's not for us. We love the idea, but strategically not where we're going but why don't you do your own guitar with that in you clearly passionate about it why don't you come up with something um, and the company's called PJD they a UK guitar factory they, they manufacture some lovely guitars in the UK um, but as I say it wasn't for them so went back with my thinking head on spoke to Thomas and I said look you know I probably wouldn't do it under a sound effects name you know cream tea is all about pickups this is an opportunity for you to showcase your pickups mm -hmm. and the uh, you know a player is the ability to swap the pickups out. It seems like a natural fit. So out of that was born a new company, Cream Tea Guitars. And then Thomas just sat casually tacking to him and he said, I'll, I'll ring Billy. I'll ring Billy and tell him all about this. He'll be really excited because he's often said to me, wouldn't it be great to have your own guitar brand so that you can show off your pickups? The first time I met Thomas, he came into the shop and it's how the whole thing started, um, looking at buying a Pearly Gates Gibson Les Paul uh, that I personally owned, I decided to sell. So, and he, and he got there and he looked at a couple of things on the guitar and he said, I, I, I just checked with Billy, this is okay. And, and he picked up the phone, I was like, he's got Billy Gibbons on speed dial, this is outrageous. And, and I thought, you know, people do that and you think they're blagging, but no, he, he was, he couldn't get hold of Billy, he got hold of Elwood, Billy's tech. Yeah. Um, but they had a conversation about it, he bought the guitar and, and, and then moved over. So when Thomas then rang Billy, Billy said, look, Hey Thomas, I've wanted to do this for a while, why don't we design a guitar together? So, it's got Billy's name on it. This isn't the Billy Gibbons signature playing guitar. This is Billy Gibbons the guitar designer, mm -hmm. and that's very, very different. I think it's important to understand that. In the same way that Billy's got hot sauce, he does his hot rod cars, yeah. this is what he wanted to put into a guitar, but he wanted it to be that anybody could buy and play, as you know, you know, Spinning guitars, furry guitars, all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes. Yeah. That that clearly wasn't gonna um, that wasn't gonna go for this. He wanted something that was new, uh, had some uh, reflections of guitars past, but a consumer might might like. It wasn't gonna look you know completely out of the ordinary. Yes, absolutely. Well, tell us more about um, PJD guitars because they're a very interesting company. Anyway, 
those of you who may have seen, they make kind of F style guitars, let's call them, yeah. kind of more Fender style bolt on guitars. Yeah. And I've been doing some really interesting work for not a huge amount of price point either. They're cost effective, well made yeah. guitars. And you've been stocking them for a while. Yeah, absolutely. And we've 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 done very well with the PJD guitars. They're 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 really good value for money. They're really nice guitars. Lee is a, is a relatively young man, sort of early thirties. Uh, he's the um, you know the sort of owner of PJD, and and I think he's going to go a very very long way in this industry. I think he's got plenty more to come from him yet. But you look how far he's evolved in a relatively short period of time. It's very impressive. They're, you know, they're, they're making hundreds of guitars per year. They've also got an ambition to, um, in the same way that they're going to be making our guitars for some other brands as well. So there will, out of this idea and PJD, there will evolve a whole new guitar house and guitar industry for the UK. So it's very, very exciting to be at the very early stages of that. And as I say, Cream Tea Guitars, because this is a project that's a year old now, yeah. was kind of, um, involved in that sort of catalyst that will turn PJD into a single brand, into multi-brands. In, in three or four years' time, I think that will be a very well-known uh, production facility within the UK. It's really interesting. Now, one thing that I certainly have been struggling to get my head around, and um, obviously had to for doing the demo on this, yeah. is there are a lot of models, and there's, a, there's yeah. at least one more to come that we've heard about, a specific yeah. gold guitar. So yeah. uh, I, I've got the, the kind of standard behind me which is this guy yep these are lovely little guitars i do like these i have to say i've got a certain Good. affinity with these yeah so this is this is the standard so if you want to i mean sure okay so this. essentially they're, they're all the same shape but then they've got a variety of different appointments so um i'm going to let you hold that one we just start at the top and, and work absolutely down, just for the simple Please. reason that billy was very aware that what he wanted in a guitar might not be what everybody wanted yeah and a couple of things he particularly wanted, he didn't want a toggle switch. Yeah. Because, you know, he, he very often only uses a bridge pickup anyway. Yeah. Um, so he just asked for volume controls, two volume controls and a tone control. And I kind of thought, yeah, that's okay, but there might be some people want a, a toggle switch on there. Yeah. He also wanted a particular Music City bridge, which um, is, is very expensive to buy. And when you put that on a guitar, it ends up bumping the price point up quite a lot. And in terms of the you know the physics of a guitar, the two-piece goto bridge works very well. Yeah. So the standard starts with uh, a toggle switch, a two-piece goto. You get whisker bucker pickups as standard, which retail at four hundred pounds in their own right. Mm -hmm. You can have it either with or without pickup switching, and we'll. So show. this is this is without the pickup switching. Correct. So it's kind of traditional, you know, yep. kind of looking guitar on the back. Yeah. So an all solid mahogany guitar. It is chambered, so the top's been sliced. It's been chambered. Uh, top put back on again, and then a, 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 sing, a simple stain and a nitro finish, um, a veneered headstock, and yes, stain the same color around. Goto hardware, and a say, you know, cream tea pickups on yeah. it. So the, the, it's a very nice, simple standard guitar in its own right. You know, just a classic mahogany slab that sounds amazing. Yeah, super comfortable. I really like the. It's a ten-inch radius fretboard as yep. well, which is. It's just, it's a very comfy instrument to hold. It, it feels a bit like an old friend. And with these finishes as well, they're gonna you know, wear it a little bit as you get into playing them. It's just a great, it's a great guitar for, yeah. for anybody really. So we move up from this one, there is a model called the Custom. The Custom, yeah. So the Custom looks a little bit like this. They've, they've all gone so far, so we haven't got one to physically show you. But essentially, you'll get a flame maple top on there, and they're all personally selected by me to date, whether I've run out of time to do that. But I've got a particular requirement for the quality of these tops. Um, so they've all got some lovely tops. We've got some amazing colors that we've come up with. Uh, it will have body binding. Uh, similarly chambered, and again, you can get it with or without pickup swapping. But like this, it will have a toggle switch on it, uh, uh, the three controls, yep. and a two-piece bridge. So that's the custom. This comes in a high-quality padded gig bag, and once you get to the custom, they come in a Hiscox cream brand. Yeah, case. we can show that. I've got sort of a yep. little bit of B-roll on that, so that's good. Uh, so we've got the custom, which is yeah, the, essentially this with the binding and the, the nice yep. top. And that also comes with the whisker bookers. And then we move on to the guitar that you're holding. Yeah. And also we'll talk about the Relish technology in this yeah. as well, because cool. it's very yeah. interesting. So where this differs in, uh, over and above the custom we just talked about, it has neck binding, headstock binding, um, and it has additional chambering in it. Uh, I'm no guitar designer. I, I, I hold my hands up there, but my one little thing I put into this one, 
was that we know Billy really, really likes light guitars, so he wanted it very, very chambered. So in addition to the chambering that stands in the standard and the custom, this has also got his initials carved out as an additional chambering. You'll never see it. No. You've got to believe us, it's there. All of them come uh, with a, a certificate of authenticity signed by Thomas. Um, they come with some nazzy little wallets with the pickups in. Yeah, and the a, beautiful a, quality yeah. leather wallets. Yeah. Huh? yeah, I want a leather wallet. And, a, and um, and a, yeah, same same for the certificate, etc. Now, I think the key to these guitars, obviously, you can have the pickup soldered in, and that's great. Yep, all the pickups sound great. I had a lot of fun playing around with them and shooting them in and out for different for the track I I worked on, which yeah. you can see in another video on the channel. We'll link yeah. that in the description in the top right hand corner now. But tell us about the pickup swapping. Okay, so this is this is where I do think this guitar comes into its own. As you rightly say, you can have it fixed pickup and it's a cracking guitar in its own right. But um, I'll show on this one because uh, A, I like the color, and B, it's got some pickups in it. So, looks like a traditional guitar from the front. You flip it round, you have a magnetic plate on the back, and the pickups, you literally, you pull out like that, and that's it. There's no soldering, no wiring. You pick up another pickup, I'm not sure what I've got, a neck or a bridge, but they're fully interchangeable. You want to put a neck pickup yep. in the bridge, you can do so. You literally just flip it in there, and you have a guitar with another pickup. I mean, I've seen you know the Dan Armstrong, so it's yeah. not a new idea to have swappable pickups, but the way that Relish have developed this and just finesse the technology on it, I think it's the Rolex, being a Swiss company, of yeah. pickup swapping. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting way of doing it, and I, I had an engineer friend of mine come and have a look at these, and he was yeah. fascinated at the, uh, the tech involved. Now, I think the thing that a lot of people would think seeing that is that it's a bit of a gimmick. Now, admittedly, even I, I thought that a little bit, but having had a go of these, I think there is a very practical application that yeah. you might take one guitar to a studio session, for instance, Yeah. if you're that kind of a player, or if you just have one guitar that you want to try a couple of different sounds with. Yeah. And you yeah, want I mean, to try in, our, in, our, in our guitar shop, we run you know, uh, a very successful tech business, but we regularly swap pickups out for people. Yeah. You don't need to do it with this. You can just literally pick them out and put them yeah. in again. Tell us, if someone's got another brand of pickup, yeah. can you fit that? So we, on? on the website, as well as the guitars, we're gonna have a full range of cream tea pickups that are pre-housed, as we would say. Um, so they've got the little yeah. plastic on it. In addition to that, we can sell the housings if somebody wants to do it themselves, and we have a little video on it. it it's something that, you know, if you're half decent with a soldering iron, you can do that yourself. Yep. Um, we are going to be selling uh, brands such as Seymour Dun Duncan and others pre-house, so you can put Seymour Duncan pickups in it. Or if you've got a set of bare knuckles or lollas or whatever you want, if you send them to yep. us, we can house them. So you can put anything in it. Obviously it's restricted to humbucker sized pickups. Yeah. We've developed our own P90 pickup in a humbucker size for this yeah. called the Duchess. Uh, but pretty much pretty much anything you can put in it, yeah. That's incredible. And I mean, going forward, there are a limitless possibilities to, to this concept. Yeah. Tell us a, a little bit about what to come with this guitar line, if, if you can, Tim, if it's not all completely Secret, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll tell you certainly what I can. Firstly, there's one little model we missed out that you mentioned earlier, and that is there's going to be a gold top version of this. There's a limited run of 25. Uh, they're an aged gold top, single pickup, with a shed load of Billy sounds that you can you can swap out. So that's kind of a, I think that will be a, a really, really, I can't wait really for that. cool guitar. Yeah, I think well, we might need to get that one in for another. Well, number one is going to me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, I, as soon as I conceived that, I said, yeah, I, I would really like one of those. Uh, so in terms of where's it, where it goes next, so we, we know that people have bought Relish guitars and have pickups. Um, these have started out really well, so we know that in a relatively short period of time, there'll be a bunch of people with these that will have pickups. Um, and what we wanted to do next was to produce a lowest cost possible we could while still being manufactured to a very high quality in the UK guitar where you don't even have to have any pickups with it. You can just buy, and the kind of the working name is the skeleton. Okay. You can buy a guitar with no pickups and use the pickups you've already got and just bang them in there. So that's going to be, um, uh, a, it's going to be a bolt on neck. So it's, you know, back to a, you know, a, an F style, mm -hmm. should we say, possibly offset. So we're, we're still working on that at the moment. Um, but we expect to have those available probably towards the end of Q1 next year. So there will be a skeleton guitar as a, as a low cost option to put your pickups in. You'll be able to buy some pickups to go with it yeah, if you want course. to, but we just want to leave the whole, 
um, just that opportunity to say, I've, I've, you know, I've bought into this concept and I've bought a bunch of pickups, but I'd like an F-Star guitar, something a little bit different. Um, you know, I don't want to buy the pickups all over again. That's the beauty of yeah. this. You could have, you know, a whole load of pickups and they're, they're all interchangeable. Following that, uh, we have another couple of uh, pretty impressive rock gods that want guitars made. So there is more to come from this. Yes. Um, some more shapes. Uh, they won't all necessarily have pickup swapping in them, although we're you know we're very wedded to that idea. Um, but we envisage by the end of next year to probably have four different shapes in the range of guitars, including a bass guitar for a very well-known bass player. Exciting stuff. Now, the big question: cost. Cost is a big deal for, especially at the moment. Yeah, you know, we're just coming out of yep. the worst financial year for for most players and, yep. and, and people just generally. These, I mean, these are not cheap guitars. No. Um, no, they're made to a very high quality. They're made in the UK, so they're never going to be a you know, cheap, cheap guitar. You're looking at kind of Gibson, Les Paul standard money sure. for one of these, yep. roughly, aren't you? I mean, Absolutely, yeah. yeah obviously, yeah. this guitar is you know, going to be sold in the States and yep. etc. So when we were talking about you know, along the £2,000 range here yep. in the UK, yep. And similarly, we're probably going up to a core line PRS here, but I feel very strongly about this is that um, there's no reason why uh, an English guitar cannot be as valuable or held in high esteem as an American guitar. The finishes on these, I think that whilst it will hit core line PRS prices, I think that's fully justified in what you're getting for the money, especially yeah. as you've got the technology in there and you've got a whole bunch of pickups. Essentially, you've got four guitars for one, so you could argue they're a thousand pound a piece. We do have to mention, I, I want to give a mention to whoever does the finishes on these because they are stunning quality. I mean, they're really incredible. It's Jason Sprayson. Jason, Jason Sprayson. Jason Sprayson. Jason the sprayer at PJD Guitars. And yeah, I, I gave him. This was a challenge in many ways to, to PJD because they hadn't done a set neck guitar before. There were lots of challenges and some of them um, were the colours. I, I, I'm, for the, any, any of my customers that know me, because I go on and on about it, is I'm profoundly colour color blind and apparently see the world duller than everybody else. So I tend to come up with some fairly loud colours and then variants on them. Um, so yeah, uh, we challenged Jason and he certainly rose to it. Yeah, <laughs> Jason's incredible. And just the quality of the spray, I mean, you see a lot on, on more handmade style guitars, yep. you know, a little bit of orange peel or something, and these are exquisite. So, Jason, well done, sir. Yeah, well Absolutely done, Jason. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tim, is there anything else you want to add? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much covered the range. Well, thank, thank you so much. much for joining us. We appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, really excited to see what happens. Thank Thanks you very so much, much, Tim. Just appreciate stop. you. Thank you.